good friend, Mr. Jeff Wolfers, and uh, he agreed to sit down for my uh, for a conversation with Kip. Uh, we're here in Primrose Hill, Primrose Hill, and uh, it's almost about to rain. <laughs> so, so, as I said before, it's London. It would almost be disappointing if it wasn't raining. <laughs> so we, we met just a moment ago, and. I've had a total of uh, 30 seconds of prep time. To think about what we're going to talk about? Yeah. What are we going to talk well, about? Well, so tell me, first <laughs> give a little bit of your background, Jeff. Why would I sit down and talk with you? Tell, tell me just a little bit about your background and why. That's easier to talk about than metric engine. <laughs> 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 okay. Which I must admit, I'm slightly perplexed. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. I'm trying to make them clear, but I'm obviously not succeeding completely yet. I need to watch it again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm... Uh, Kip and I worked together, when was that? Uh, 2006, six, seven, eight. Eight. Six, yeah. seven, eight. Yeah. on a big metric engine project. Yes. <laughs> big financial transformation program. But before that, I, I've done lots of big projects, big IT projects, transformation projects, internet projects, payment systems, branch, call center. I've basically done it all. Done, done all the banking systems there are to do. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm consulting. Yes. Which is what you do when you stop doing it. <laughs> you start telling other people what to do. <laughs> Which is a lot more uh, fun and less stressful. Good. So, actually, so that's a very good introduction. That's kind of where I thought maybe we, we talked for a minute here about big projects. Okay. I think one of your expertise that I noticed in you, Jeff, was the ability to organize people and to focus on problems. And. Um, you know, and, and, and particularly when they get to be problems at scale, it's a, it's a different sort of thing solving, you know, controlling yourself or one and two other people than controlling, trying to organize hundreds, a lot of people. Hundreds to organize hundreds of people. Something. So what, if, if you were to go, the, the problem in the financial space from my perspective is this data is so valuable that it's going to sit inside of companies it's not going to be something that they're going to give away for free. They're not going to publish it on the internet just because privacy concerns. Sure. They have to. They have to own it. And so companies have to organize themselves to control and use their data effectively. When when it comes to large projects, what I mean, when you advise people about how to go after that, what's your experience about how you get organized around a large well, yeah. project? We used to have a, a phrase: work things in the right order. Okay. Okay. So expand <laughs> which, on that. Which, yes, that's which, a good phrase. Which comes back to me on a regular basis. Okay. <laughs> and we use that on the big project we worked together on. Yes. And that was basically out of the simple observation that we had people worrying about things that weren't going to happen for years, if ever, versus really focusing on the foundation pieces necessary to move the program ahead today. So, um, you know, getting yourself focused on what's important. Yeah. Is really the most important thing. Okay, so so things. Let's let's contrast. Let's make it a little bit more real. What are things that might ultimately happen that people start thinking about, and yet they really can't do anything practical about on the, on the projects that we were. You know, the, the the core of the project we were working on was was to generate good numbers, mm -hmm. good financials. Yes. Period. Right. That was the goal. That was the goal. We had all sorts of people orbiting the project. So basically in large elliptical orbits, <laughs> meaning they would come close to us yes. for a few moments in time yes. at the perihelion, yes. <laughs> then they would spin out into outer space for months if not years, and then come zooming back in and the one kibitz. The one piece that comes to my mind is often air handling when it comes to these sort of large financial systems. The core of the system is about the data and it, it all has to be handled. But trying to manage errors, right? Trying to start by understanding how to correct errors is a little bit of a fruitless task. You know, I, th I think some of the modern methodologies are really informative here. I'm, the last two or three projects I've worked on with okay. financial services clients here in London, um, we've organized ourselves using ed the agile methodology, yes, which is a formal way yes. of doing what we've always done in the past right. to be successful. That's right. That's right. When you organized a big project, you had to work in an Agile way, but this is a, a better statement of what that, that yeah. really is. Yeah. So I'm, one of the things about Agile is always be testing. 
I'd see write a piece of code for testing, write a piece of code for testing, rather than write all this code and wait till the very end and try yes. to test it. Yes. It just never works. No, it's right. No, so it's right. error handling is the same way. As you're, as you're working through a problem, you keep a list on the side. This, yes. this happens, this is an error. And, this, and then later you can consolidate that and organize it. And, 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 and you find and patterns fall out of the errors sure. that you organize around. But you don't try to anticipate what all the errors might be. Well, it's impossible. Be. You can't. It's can't. impossible. <laughs> Particularly when it comes to these data projects, right? Because the data is what is what creates the air conditions. And anticipating what all the data will contain sure. is a problem. Sure. Well, it's impossible. The, in, inside the data are the answers to the problem. But until you look at the data, you don't even know what the questions and, are and in that, many cases. And that writing code and testing, producing something from the data, is critical yeah. to informing. I, I just did a big project here at one of the major, the top four banks in the UK. And it was a different space, it wasn't financial reporting, immaterial. Um, they had a bunch of views as to how many servers they had, and what data centers, and what technology they used, how much they were spending, what the costs and depreciation was, etc. Every one of their assumptions was wrong. Yes. <laughs> we built a database of all their inventory. Yes. We ran some analysis against it. We produced some graphs. We put them in front of them, and they said, we didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> we had no idea. Right. So it, it was a nice test case of and bringing, us, bringing me personally back to some of the lessons we learned on, on those financial problems. How do you, so how do you manage sponsorship on large projects? I mean, how, that seems to be a problem that I run into consistently in this space because finance is very efficient at at controlling cost right they, they, they've done this historically and they do that them to themselves in a very disciplined way it's an organization full of numbers people yes <laughs> right at the end of the day that's what they are and they control they they know what the numbers are and they 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 control that spending very effectively but what do you see is the elements for for creating sponsorship to go attack this problem and get you to the other side of simply controlling the numbers and using the data. For you know, it's almost like foreign policy, right? There's hard policies and soft policies, hard, hard politics and soft politics. You have to find a way to get people to trust you, uh, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about trust, and trust comes from shared experience. And shared experience comes from actually having gone through difficult times together and coming out of the other side in one piece. <laughs> so the trick is when the, the seas get rough and the winds come up, um, to stay close to these people <laughs> and yeah. almost hold their hands and say it's going to be okay. This is going to be difficult. It's going to be okay when we get to the other side. And then deliver. Yes. If you don't deliver, then trust is destroyed. Yes. You know, so that was, that's perfect. Just actually three weeks ago, my daughter called me. She's in a new job. She was struggling with the problem. I asked her about her counterpart, you know, she's trying to solve one thing by herself. And I used a phrase from uh, Mr. Wolfers with I said, you know, I mean, you've got to, you can't solve this problem by yourself. It's bigger than just you will be able to solve. And so your counterpart, there's a phrase Jeff used with me all the time, it's no daylight between us. No daylight, that's right. No <laughs> daylight, no daylight. That, that, that when, when people look at the leadership team, they can't detect, you know, cracks. Oh, this person has that agenda, this person has that agenda. If you can keep the leadership team to have no daylight between them, it makes a world of difference for the army yeah, involved. You're it? running a political campaign. Sim simple messages repeated over and over. <laughs> Stay on message, don't go off the script. Which is, which is the, the key part of no daylight. Yes. But, uh, not always, it's easier said than done. It's hard to, because the stresses and strains of these projects are incredible. You're asking people to work 12, 14 hours a day, away from home, yes. you know, with people they've never worked with before, they get team, teams thrown together, being asked to do impossible things, and, uh, and it, tells, it, te it tears on people. And so you're going to find people go off the reservation here and there and get peeled off by the naysayers and the people who you know, would enjoy you yes. failing. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Well, okay, so it's starting to rain a little bit more heavy. Um, Indeed. <laughs> and I'd rather not my, my video equipment be destroyed in the rain. 
Um, but I want you to know it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you taking the time. It's lovely I, seeing you again. I, Jeff was a great mentor in how to organize to large projects and how to get things moving in the right direction. Taught me a great deal about those. I appreciate the time. And I appreciate our time together today. Thank you, Kim.